On Friday, the mailman brought me a brand new toy that I'd like to show off, take a couple of minutes to describe it. This is a Peterson Pro One tubular lock pick. Now you might wonder why I want one of these, because I think I, you, I showed you one of these just the other day. Uh, and there are reasons, and let, let's talk about the reasons. On the Peterson lock pick, uh, let's start first at the tip. Now you'll notice the tip, uh, I've got it set up, if I get it to focus here, I've got it set up for seven pins. Now, these tips, unlike the other one you just saw, that south ord, these tips are replaceable. You take out, uh, there's a screw you can see on the center. We pop this tip off and we put another tip on there. It comes with a variety of them. You can see there's a, I think there's a total of six or seven different tips for this thing. Uh, you can use seven wire, you can use, or sorry, seven pin, eight pin. Uh, eight pin left, eight pin right. There are tips for the kryptonite. There are tips for the American padlock. There are tips for some weird octagon shaped thing, probably a a Vero lock. I, I really I really don't know. I, some of them I've never even seen before. But that's the advantage of this tip is that basically any tubular lock out there, there's a tip for this that will fit it. If there's not a tip for it, if they invent a new uh, new lock tubular lock shape then uh, Peterson can simply manufacture a new tip for it and we just bolt it on just like we've done all of these others. So that's one advantage. Now you'll see the feeler wires there popping out. Uh, if I hold it up you can see they pop out. Uh, that's because we're going to be single pin picking as opposed to using, oops, sorry about that, this camera just does not want to cooperate. So I've got all of these zeroed out, as you can see, dropped down below the level of that brass ring. The only one sticking up is the tension, uh, the one that will apply tension. I can't adjust that one. Now if we turn the pick over and we take a look at the other end, you'll notice uh, that we have, these are the plungers where we're going to single pin each of the picks, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. And then because we only have seven wires installed, I've removed the wire from the eighth one. So it's empty right now, so it just doesn't get in the way. To convert it to one of the other uh, tips, if I wanted to convert it to an eight wire configuration, it's about a three minute uh, operation. It's not that, it doesn't take very long at all. It's not a big deal. So today, why would I want this pick as opposed to the other one? Well, in addition to the flexibility that I've just talked about, there are other reasons. This pick, this Southord, will not pick all tubular locks because technology today, the, the engineers for these lock companies know that we can use this to pick them. And this is a very common, very inexpensive pick. And of course, that's why I have a couple of them in my bag. And I think all of you do too. In order to defeat this, they, they've started to put in um, not only security pins, but they've also put in variable strength springs. So with a very strong spring, very weak spring, very strong spring, and they alternate, these picks, these south ords, are very easily defeated. So when we try to impression it, those strong springs will overset these feeler gauges, and the weak springs will underset them. So these things are practically useless against the locks. Now I have a lock here. I'm going to put this down and just show you. I've already got it inside of uh, the um, device. This is a, uh, a fork lock. This is a high security lock with some of those weird kinky pins, in, uh, kinky springs in it. Uh, it does work, as you see. Brand new. I just took it out of the package. But I'm not really showing you the lock here. This is, anybody can pick this lock. I really want to show you this tool because this is the magic. This is the alien technology that, that I think we should all be excited about. Uh, all I do is I take this uh, pin, line it up with the groove on the lock, and just slide it in there. And then, then we can start. And then, uh, if I just get it in there, I think, I think you're starting to figure out why I don't have any kids. There we go. Finally found it. Uh, got lucky. Again, let me adjust the camera just a hair. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing as I pick it. There we go, and, and it's even focused. Now, when we get to this point, uh, Peterson also includes with this very cool shipping container, inside of there are, are uh, all, I don't know, like 10,000 pages of instructions. Oh, damn it if I haven't pulled that out again. And I'm, I'm too impatient. I can't read 10,000 pages. Uh, he gives this very detailed description about how you're supposed to 
sense which of these is the binding pin and then turn the screw down to set it and then you'll turn this little wingding up to mark it as, a, as it's been picked. That'll tell you how many times you've picked each one and you know what? Uh, maybe that works for Peterson but I'm an impatient kind of guy. I got a fast way that I, I'm going to do this. You just have to be a little bit careful. Uh, so uh, again this is balanced on the top here, both my hands. It's sitting on top of the lock we have to keep it perfectly flush. Now that is critical. I've, I've discovered from trial and error. So if you start to deviate left or right, that'll throw the pin off. So just keep it perfectly flat. And I'm just going to turn it just a hair to start bind, so I can find the binding pin, just like applying torque to a, to a core. And then I've discovered I'm just going to go around here and find the binding pin. And I don't have to go in any order. And you can hear them when you find it really cool. You can feel it and hear. And if I screw up, which I often do, it's very easy to, re -be to begin this again. I just release the tension. Okay, I, that's a major major shift. I think we got one more left. And there it is. The lock is now picked. Now we have to go through that painful process. I've only rotated it so the the pick wires are now sitting on the flats and this lock is picked. All I need to do now is go one at a time and tighten these down to set those wires in place to lock them down. Now the reason I'm doing this is if we want to pick the lock all the way. Right now I can turn it one turn, one rotation, but then all those pins uh, are going to pop up and we've got to begin again. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to decode this lock. So if I want to make a key, I can do that. Uh, or if I just want to completely unlock it and relock it, I'll use this pick as a working key. This is the painful part, turning all these screws down. Okay, this is the last one. Okay, we're all set. Now we can turn this key. Now I will, we've already unlocked it, and there we go. Now if we want to decode this thing, all we have to do, now that we've picked the lock, these wires are now at the proper left and uh, proper height. And Peterson was kind enough to give us this really cool decoding tool. So we begin, and we just begin. Uh, I can't get the right angle, but I think you get the idea. We just find the, uh, which groove that that properly fits in, and then we write it down. And we just go around the circle, one, two, three, four, all the way to seven. And then we can have our key uh, cut by code. Really cool, very fast. I took my time uh, to try to demonstrate how this thing works. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we didn't waste anybody's time. As always, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, stay safe and uh, stay legal.